So let's talk about fasting. Recently on YouTube, there's been a lot of discussion by several people about whether fasting is good for you or bad for you. So we've heard people saying that it can burn muscle, that it's fine for muscle, that it's useful, that it's not useful. So let me go through each of the arguments and explain what exactly they're seeing and talking about and let you know what the bottom line is. I'm Chrisman Loomis from unaging.com. First person I'd like to talk about is Dr. Atia. Why did I stop my fasting protocol? It's very difficult to gain back the lean muscle you keep losing. And Dr. Rhonda Patrick says... One of the biggest things I've changed my mind on over the past few years is um, my stance on meal skipping. So basically, they're both saying that they've decided that intermittent fasting isn't something they want to do because of the muscle loss effects. And before we get into more about that, let me talk about the kind of fasting that they're talking about. They're talking about intermittent fasting, which is where for at least a day and several days a week, you fast. So this could be alternate day fasting, where you fast one day and then you eat the next day and then fast the next day. Or it could be something like 5-2 fasting, where you fast for two days out of the week and the other five days you eat normally. Or it could even be a longer fast, where you're fasting for maybe a week at a time or 10 days at a time. And for any one of these particular kinds of fasting, they found that they lose quite a bit of muscle. And the reason for that is because when you're fasting for longer than a day, your body becomes very low on glucose, on sugar, and needs to move over to ketosis or using fat to power your body, which is great for burning your fat. But the problem is, is that fat is converted into energy in your mitochondria. And almost every cell in the body has mitochondria to use fat for energy. But the key word there is almost. Your red blood cells don't have mitochondria and they can't live on fat so they can't digest it. So once the sugar stores in your liver get too low, then the body needs to take the protein from your muscles, basically catabolizing your muscles, and convert them into sugar to keep your red blood cells alive. So here's a study from Dr. Atia's website that shows very clearly when you go to a day of fasting and you go to zero calories on the fasting days, almost all of the weight loss that you have is muscle loss. This is the red side here. So these people were eating zero zero calories on their fasting days. And then when they had their eating days, they would be eating 150% of the calories or 200% of the calories. So they were basically eating all the calories they needed to maintain their weight. And yet they were still losing muscle because they were going a whole day without eating any calories at all. And that would cause their livers to transform the protein in their muscles into sugar to feed their red blood cells. So Dr. Atia and Dr. Patrick are right. If you're going to 100% fast for over 24 hours, you will lose muscle mass. But if you take a more moderate view, and instead of going to zero calories on your fasting days, you go to 25% which is what's recommended under the 5-2 diet, then we can see a very different picture. Here's another study that has people going to 25% on their fasting day, so around 300 or 500 calories a day. And you can see that for them, they lost 80% of fat and only 20% of muscle, which is about the same amount of muscle to fat that was lost for the people who were just doing straight 75% calorie restriction, so they're eating 25% less calories every day. So it does make a difference. If you're going to go up fast for an entire day, you should fast almost an entire fast and to make sure to get at least 25% of the calories you need. But then we have another doctor weighs in. It's Dr. Stanfield then. It was hoped that time-restricted feeding would offer benefits beyond simply restricting calories. That's what the rodent study suggested. But when the Cochrane organization performed a meta-analysis in 2021, where they combined all of the relevant clinical studies together, they found that the trials that met the calorie intake between both groups, there were no differences in weight loss or blood sugar levels. Dr. Stanfield feels obliged to review Dr. Atia and Dr. Patrick's review. And when he talks about fasting, he's talking about the studies that deal with both intermittent fasting, where you fast for an entire day at a time, or time-restricted fasting, where you restrict your fasting within your eating period within a certain day to a certain number of hours, say eight hours. 
and don't eat outside of that. And they've been doing studies on inter these kinds of fasting, both intermittent fasting or whole day fasting or time restricted feeding, where you restrict your feeding time to a few hours for a couple of decades. Originally, when they were doing mouse studies, it seemed very hopeful that fasting would be more beneficial than just restricting calories, that it would give you autophagy or the cleaning of the cells or cellular senescence would be solved and it would kill dying cells. But in two decades of studying, they really haven't seen anything come out that really demonstrated this. Basically, the benefits of fasting have all come down to the same benefits you get from losing weight just from dieting. And this is what Dr. Stansfield's point is, that there's nothing magic about fasting. Basically, the results, benefits that you get from fasting are because you've changed the times when you're allowed to eat. And so naturally, you're going to eat less food. If you only eat during eight hours during the day, then all the snacking or anything else you've done later then is cut out. And it helps form a kind of discipline about these are the times it's okay to eat, and these are the times it's not okay to eat, which then can help you to do a better job of keeping your weight goals and losing weight. So Dr. Stansfield is also right. Basically, fasting comes down to a fancy way of dieting. And if dieting is important for you, if you're borderline diabetic or have metabolic issues, that can be very helpful in that case. And then we have Seam Land who comes in. And Seam Land says... I started doing 16 and 8 intermittent fasting after high school and I continue doing it throughout my military service and university. Fasting hasn't jeopardized my ability to build muscle or get stronger. So as you can tell by listening to him, he's talking about time-restricted fasting, which is to say that every day he has a certain period of the day where he eats and outside of that he doesn't take in any calories. And as he demonstrates with over 12 years of doing time-restricted feeding, it's been fine for his musculature. He works out regularly, and as a result, he's been able to get good results from that. So, seam land is also correct. If you want to do time-restricted feeding for an extended amount of time, it will not prevent you from getting good blood work or from getting benefits out of restricting calories and can help you to maintain the weight that you want to. But what all four of them are missing is that in the long term, either time-restricted feeding or intermittent fasting has effects on the body. Anytime you take a period of days in a week or hours in a day where you say, yes, normally I would be eating, but I'm not going to, it means that the remaining time that you're eating, you're going to be eating a lot more. If you compare someone who eats two meals a day with someone who eats three meals a day, then the person who eats two meals a day, if they're going to eat a comparable amount of calories, will be eating 50% more calories during those two meals than the person who's eating three meals. And going even further, if you have someone who's eating one meal a day, or OMAD as the abbreviation goes, then they're going to have to eat three times as much in that one meal as the person who is eating three meals a day. And over the long term, once we're no longer dieting or trying to lose weight, it turns out that's not as healthy as you would like. In fact, it increases premature death by between 10 to 30%. So there was a study of the NHANES data set that showed that basically the fewer meals a day you get, the more of an increase in premature death you have, the shorter your longevity. And that's because the less meals you eat during the day, the more you're going to increase the amount of food that you're eating during those meals, which will increase your insulin spikes, will decrease the ability of your body to absorb the protein that you get during those meals, and also might reduce the amount of nutrients that you can get, the vitamins and minerals that you could get from those meals. And over the long term, this shows up in the mortality statistics as increased death for people who do long-term fasting. And also, if, even if you just say, okay, well, I'm going to eat three meals a day, but I'm going to eat it within a restricted time window, that's also been shown not to be beneficial. Unless you get four and a half or more hours between your meals, there's about a 17% increase in premature death or all-cause mortality. So the bottom line is, no, fasting doesn't need to eat your muscles as long as you're getting at least 25%, about 300 to 500 calories on your fasting days. It can be an effective way to lose weight, especially to lose fat. But if you're at a stable weight, and if you're able to maintain that without weight without fasting, it's going to be healthier in the long term if you eat three meals a day, spread out evenly over the day, so that you're not overeating at any particular meal. And that's the bottom line. I'm Chris Loomis from Unaging.com.